Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over initializers. Initializers are a way of basically sending the code to the front of the line, basically, of activating it out of order to where it should be. So in other words, when you get a program, the, the code is read from top to bottom. Initializers change that order a little bit. Now, we've used the term initialize at first, right? Var A, you declare it, and then you initialize it a equals 1. You actually give it a value. So that's initializing the variable. An initializer is something that actually takes care of giving proper values to something. Let me go into more detail as an example. First of all, the keyword or the key character is the colon. We've used the colon before, remember? So fluffy.i's right here equals 4. If this is an if statement, right? If fluffy.i's equals 3, print true, else, there's the colon, print false. It equals 4, so it's going to print false. If we change that to 3, print 3, and it's going to be true, okay? That's kind of like a synonym, so you can use it for the one-line conditional statement, but that's not an initializer, just to let you know about that. Um, so where it is an initializer, for example, is down here. In When we talk about inheritance, class cat extends pet, we have the initializer here. So what that does is you can have a bunch of things inside of here. So you can have um, fur, uh, um, I'm sorry, string, fur, um, and you can say, uh, um, what else does a cat have? Um, bool, personnel, fun, loving, or something like that, okay? So you can have a bunch of other things, but what the initializer does is before you create the object, so you, you instantiate the object, before you do that, don't go down the line. Jump immediately down to right here. So if you jump immediately down to right here, because there's the, the initializer, right? It says... Before you even create the object, go to pet.dog and, and get the characteristics. That's the superclass, and, uh, um, and you want to inherit it into the class of cat. Okay, so you automatically do that immediately right there before you create the object. So when you create the object, before it is, this jumps to the front of the line. It says, this is what you need. Okay, fine. Then go ahead and create the class. So it's basically like saying, let me see if I can describe this. It, it's basically like saying you have a cat, um, and if you don't have an initializer, well, first of all, I don't think it'll actually run, but let's just say theoretically, you don't have an initializer, you would take home your cat, but it wouldn't have any eyes, or at least the concept of eyes is undefined. And then once you take it home, a little bit later, you would then activate the eyes, and then the eyes would magically appear on the cat. All right, but there will be a time if you create the class, it's moving down, moving down, moving down, and then the eyes develop onto the cat. That's not what you want. You want the eyes on the cat from second one, right? Split second one, you, but before it's even created, you want to make sure, no, I want a cat with three eyes. Let's just change that to do two because that's spooking me out. Okay, let's just say I want a cat with two eyes before you create the cat, and then when you instantiate it, cat will have two eyes. So I hope that's clear. So so what you're actually doing is actually creating the cat with the eyes and the, that's the initializer. You you have super dot dog. It takes the characteristics of the super class before you actually instantiate or create the cat itself. So there is no time after the object is created that there that eyes will equal null. Okay? So I that's actually important because Sometimes if there is a split second delay, you can catch the object that's changing properties. You don't want that. So you have to have the colon, which is the initializer, do this first. There is another instance that I can think of where you can have something similar. Let's just say class um, car, okay? And I'm gonna say final int tires, okay? And now I'm gonna say car and 
tires equals three. It's going to give you an error right here. Final variable tires must be initialized, okay, because there's no value. Tires cannot be used as a setter. It is final. So this one, it goes up and down, okay? So it goes from up top to bottom. The code travels from top to bottom. The computer says, okay, class car, when you instantiate it, final int tires. So tires equals null, and it's final. You cannot change it. So you cannot change it. Therefore, it's null. But then you're going down here and saying tires equals three. Well, wait a minute. No, I just said it's final. You can't change it. So that's where the errors are actually coming from. So if you did this, let's just say car, car equals new car, print car, car dot tires, what's it going to be? It's going to be null, right? Exactly. But what if you wanted to give it a value? Initializers to the rescue, right? So initializer tires equals four. Again, so it's not going top to bottom. You're going to instantiate the class car. It jumps over here immediately to the initializer. So the initializer sends things to the front of the line, right? It's to the front of the line. Okay, we got tires equals four. Wait a minute. What is tires? Let's look up here. Tires is a final and it's an integer as well. So jump down here, jump up here, say this is final. Tires has the characteristic of four. You cannot change it after that because it's final. So that's another way if you have to have it final, but you don't want to give it a value until later, add the initializer inside of there. So this here would be four, right? But you cannot change it in the future. So you cannot say car.tires equals two. You can't do that because, again, it's final. It'll give you an outright error it, itself. All right. But so, so that's a way of not, if you don't know what the value is at first, you can introduce it a little bit later, later in, inside of there. Um, and we can go, dot, go from there. Let's just say, uh, oh, and, and we could play around with it a little bit um, just to say, show how the initializer actually works. But for the most part, from what I've seen, you're going to see it in something like this where you have a final. And, and if the question arises that why would you have to have a final and, and do this, I'm not exactly sure. That's really advanced programming. But if you do ever see something like that, you'll at least understand it. OK, so that's the best I can give you. I'm sorry. Um, class cat. Um, the, I, I, this is by far the most common area where I see the initializer when you're actually talking about inheritance and um, super classes. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Again, if there's any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, thank you very much.